It wouldn't be cool if math was simple. Well, I mean, it is. We just have to understand some of the terminology. Uh, two words that you're going to watch out for are discrete or continuous, and that depends on the solution set you're working with. So solution set is all of your possible values that are valid for your inequality. But you might have a discrete solution set, or you might have a continuous one. How can you tell? Well, continuous is when all values are valid. And you might see it written like this. Negative 2x plus 5y is greater than or equal to 10. That's the equation we had before, but they've added some extra information here. It says x, there's this, what looks like a c with a line through it or some funky looking e. Uh, in fact, it is a funky looking e. It stands for an element. So x is an element of all real numbers. Real numbers are every possible number. So it could be a decimal, it could be an integer, it could be a rational, irrational number, it could be anything. And if any number is fair, you have a continuous solution set. In this case here, x and y are both elements of real numbers, which means that all x values and all y values are valid. And that would be the same as our example that we just worked on. Discrete graphs, on the other hand, are a little bit different. Okay, so a discrete solution set is quite similar in the sense that you, you set up your graphs the exact same way. But when you're presenting them, you can only highlight the points that are defined by your variables. In this case, x is an element of all integers, so you can only highlight integers. You cannot highlight irrational numbers in this case. So an integer is any positive or negative number. It cannot be a fraction. So fraction is invalid. So five and a half doesn't work. Pi doesn't work because it's an irrational number. Uh, you can only pick a regular positive or negative number. In order to highlight that, it means you can only put dots where there are valid points. So you have to dot every single valid point. This is what it looks like. Yeah, it's not great. You have to dot every point, right? Uh, and unfortunately, I haven't figured out a way to get Desmos to do this. I'm pretty sure you could because it's pretty darn awesome, but uh, I haven't played enough around with um, discrete or continu continuous um, functions just yet. But for the time being, if you do run into something like that in your practice, that's what it's talking about when you have a discrete or a um, continuous function. Now let me just show you a slightly different example where the number is a little bit easier, so it's easier to define and show you an example of something discrete. Okay, so a simpler example would be like an extreme line or a horizontal line. y is greater than or equal to 1. Well, I know if it was y equals 1, it would be a line that's horizontal and just crosses my y-axis at 1. Because it's a discrete graph, I can only make my line covering the points that actually exist. Ideally, you're using a ruler for this. Now, because in equality, I can only highlight the points that exist. So values that are greater than or equal to 1, well, I've just dotted all the points that are equal to 1. So now I'm going to highlight all the points that are greater than 1 that exist as integers. So I can't fill any of this space here where it's 1 and a half, but I can fill in the points at 2. Just like that. All right, so that's working with linear inequalities. Uh, I'm going to give you some practice now that you can work on, and I'm hoping that you guys will enjoy this unit. I like inequalities a lot. Um, it's, it's one of the it's one of the units in math where we can actually relate to real-world problems. Not that you couldn't do that in statistics or intrigue or anything like that but uh with inequalities it's like it's like big brain math but it's really it's i don't know i think it's really cool anyways so i'll give you some practice give me a shout if you have any questions or concerns and uh, i'll catch you in the next one